I've had this old Heiko soldering station since the mid-80s, and it has a certain sentimental value, but it had been dropped and smashed, but it's still working. So I printed a new base for it in the first video, and now I'm going to go ahead and print a new top. I've done all the design work for the top and bottom in Fusion 360. I've printed the top in PLA Plus on my Ender 3 V2 printer. Fusion 360 has the slicer and the post processor to generate the G code for the printer. This is the first print I've done that's used support material with this big block in the centre that prints quickly, it's only one squirt wide, has been built up from the floor, it's now 50 odd millimetres tall, it's going to come up 70 odd millimetres to support the roof of this soldering station, uh, which overhangs and, and needs some support or otherwise it would sag. The gap, there's a gap around the edge because the edge actually sort of, it, it, the slope of the edge supports itself okay and, and the, as it curves over it's still supported a bit like an igloo but when it, when it gets to a large flat section it needs support and the program automatically calculates the size of that support material that's needed based on the overhang of around 40 degrees or something. So that, that's chuffing around. It's doing a layer at the moment in under two minutes, but in total there were 600 layers. The remaining layers should be knocked off in about two minutes each. And uh, I think we're up to about 400, but uh, close to 600 to do. So still uh, maybe uh, at least 10 hours to go. Well, this iron is now assembled. Um, I've got tape on here holding the aluminium decal face on. It heats up very quickly um, and now it's cycling on and off at around 300 degrees. Turn it up to 400 degrees. It takes a little longer to heat. Um, Look, it's come together very well. Uh, the soldering stand rest fits well on that side. Oh, it looks rubbish at the moment with, I've got super glue behind this um, aluminium fascia, hoping to glue it back to the blue plastic. Um, it's held on, there's a, a nut underneath the knob there holding it back and the LED sort of lines things up holding the aluminium back in place. The switch doesn't fit particularly well but uh, these two screws here I've countersunk and used I also had some little cap head countersunk screws. The actual where the iron goes in fits up nicely. At the rear, I've got a fastening mechanism where the uh, top is screwed to a plate in behind there and the plate is fastened down here with a uh, four millimeter countersunk screw going through there was a hole in that base in that location so I made up a plate that went around like that uh, and had a hole cut in it to fit behind the fuse holder and so the top at the rear here is fastened to that plate which is fastened down there and uh, it seems to fit pretty well. Uh, look that top case print came out pretty damn well. 
the uh, as I said the uh, soldering rest fitted properly I've uh, had a file on a few of these little titty bits that the um, that the uh, printer leaves um, they probably look worse in this video than they actually are I'm thinking maybe a heat gun may warm those uh, where I filed and, and, and it blend in a bit better but, um, now underneath there's a little bit of a telltale as to what something that happened in these locations that's where the, the front screws down with those countersunk screws the standoffs that were in the in grey plastic that were part of the print for the base actually broke off and what I've done in those two locations is use a, a big countersink made a, about 11 millimeter hole and countersunk it out to about 15 millimeter outside diameter and then printed up some new standoffs using the blue material as you can see and they were 26 millimeters tall that went from the bottom here through to the bottom of the tray inside now that was a little bit of a lesson in 3d printing is that standoffs when they can be bigger they should be bigger and possibly have webbing on them as well to stiffen them there's an extra screw in here because a standoff that held the little circuit board also sheared off it was it possibly could have been avoided i uh, um, tried to wind a self-tapping screw into a standoff that was too small and it sheared off so i drilled the where the self-tapping screw came in from the top all the way through to the bottom put a countersunk hole here and put a three millimeter screw all the way through and a nut on the top these breather holes here and not getting any air while there's no standoffs on the bottom these these are slightly raised i really should get four rubber feet for it uh, to hold it off the ground not that i believe the thing gets hot it's uh you can see it's still sitting there operational while i've been rolling that around and uh gee i'm pleased with the outcome i uh it's gonna look better when i take that tape off and that uh Super glue, which I think is a a gel that takes a little bit of time to set uh, sets, and uh, I'll take that tape off and do another run over it. This soldering iron handpiece has got all of this dirt and crap that was up behind this silicon heat shield, which I've folded back on itself and I'm going to try and remove that I'm going to go and try some WD-40 on a rag to get rid of that dirt there's also a bit of crap on the cord itself and also a cut in it there there's two little nicks close together in the cord another one there that uh, difficult to do much with it except I'm going to run some electrical tape over that section because I can't get heat shrink on there without dismantling plugs and things so um, I'll see if I can tidy that up and come back so I was able to clean all of that shit away from in there that there is just sort of folded back and, and it's a lot cleaner now um, the tip has got a bit of a dark spot on it uh, when it's tinned up and working I could show you that better I also got heat shrink on these cuts and nicks that were in these tubes I did that by actually taking the cable out of the uh, handpiece which was a delicate job but uh, 
probably easier than removing the uh, DIN plug on the other end. That's adhesive um, heat shrink, 8mm as you can read there, and that worked well. So the rest of that cable is um, intact and I've cleaned it a little bit. Yes, I used WD-40, but a lot of the stuff actually needed to be physically chipped off with my fingernail and then wiped down with WD-40 to finish it off. But uh, I'm happy with the condition of that handpiece now. I'll use this little uh, alligator clip stand to help solder the handpiece back onto the cable. Comparing the old and new soldering stations side by side now, this is the Heiko 888 model uh, with a separate soldering rest. This is the 926 from the 80s. I'll turn that one on and this one on. They're both set to about 350 degrees. They're both heating up at the moment. You'll see the digital readout here counting up. This one's just got a red LED indication as to what's happening. Um, they both heat, heat up relatively quickly. Uh, I've just had this handpiece apart. I assume it's gone back together correctly. This one's approaching the 350 degrees and it's there now and you'll see how soon afterwards this one went to 350 degrees and is now cycling on and off at 350 degrees so time difference between the two of them there was very very similar i did turn that one on fractionally sooner than that one but uh, you know i suspect the calibration of this one and its accuracy of holding 350 degrees is slightly better than this one that one perhaps being digital, this one being an old analog system. Uh, both, both irons are uh, up and running. I'll see. I'll uh, get a bit of solder on there. Oh, use that uh, yeah this tip has probably seen better days but uh, it's working whereas the newer tip got plenty of solder on it I've just been using that to solder Both irons work well. The blue grey PLA plus filament I've used for this print isn't the same blue as the newer machine, but I think it looks quite smart alongside it. And uh, I'm quite pleased with that as the restoration. This will be my closing shot of this series. The old girl's back in operation, maybe good for another 40 years. So get out to your shed and have some fun.